Well, that was fun. Well, for two of us anyway. Sorry, Stace. That was a really fun series for the Cincinnati Reds because I'm not I'm not lying. We weren't expecting anything out of this. I just wanted them to be competitive, and that's been the most fun I've had watching the Reds on the road pretty much all season. And, and I know that they won two out of three. We're going to get into that. I know we're probably talking about Luis Castillo and pinstripes soon. We're going to talk about that. But we just have to jump into this series as a whole and our takeaways, which is what we will start with. By the way, hey, I'm Jeff Carr. That's Stephen Offenbaker for Point in the Right Direction. And we have Stacey Getzulius from Lockdown Yankees for a Lockdown Reds, Lockdown Yankees crossover. Something that doesn't happen very often because the Reds and the Yankees don't play very often. But... We are going to talk about things here today. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available on all platforms. And Stace, I want to start with you because me and Steve have been talking quite a bit off air, texting back and forth, just in disbelief of what happened these last three days. But you had a take when we were talking about this off air that we're just waiting for the break at this point in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I spoke on my show many times leading into the second half of June. There was a stretch where they were playing the Rays, the Jays, the Rays, the A's, the Astros. It was it was a crazy and no break. You know, it was like straight through. And looking at that, I was hoping for it was a 17 game stretch. I was like, all right, if they do nine and eight, that'd be great. You know, and they ended up 12 and five, which was amazing and i thought okay so after that they have a 10 game road trip Mm -hmm. you know they're playing some teams they should beat the guardians the pirates whatever (laughs) i don't know they seem to have run into a wall um because they were playing at such a high level for so long that it feels like they crashed and burned you know pitchers who were pitching really well suddenly can't find the plate hitters aren't hitting uh all the things that were helping them win during that tough stretch is not happening now, so they need the all-star break. They really I, do. It's hard to disparage a team that's already got the 60 wins before the Reds <laughs> even got to 40, <laughs> but it was a good series, Steve, and, and we were having some fun. So so first off, you know, uh, listen, I wore my scrubs today. I, I am prepared. <laughs> I thought maybe, you know, for everybody knows my, my day job is an ER nurse, and I thought we might have a trauma activation for Stacy today. <laughs> so I wore my gear just in case. Uh, apparently, she's doing well, so I can take off my stethoscope. We're going to be fine. <laughs> As you but said, she my did... team has 62 wins. <laughs> we is... were not expecting this. We're, we weren't expecting this start from them, so it's fine. And they're still, what, 13 ahead, for whatever it is, so, so it's okay. So she says to me off air while you were rebooting your equipment over there, Jeff, she, you know, she says to me, well, you know, my team's got this much wins, we'll be in the playoffs. I'm like, that's right. This was our playoffs. This was, yeah. we're going to make a banner now for Great American Ballpark that says, kick the crap out of the AL East. That's I mean, going to be I the hope banner. they will. Hopefully they won't pull a 2007 Mets. Like, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. But, you know, at this point, as long as they don't screw up too badly they should squeak into the playoffs so i think but, so you know, and, it's not yeah. it's not all negative for the yankees either i you know jeff well, where i would like kind of like to start them. maybe over here and work our way back because that that starting pitcher duel in the final game of the of the series between Luis with Luis Castillo dealing and then you know the Yankees matching pretty much inning for inning that was so much fun to watch that was good old fashioned baseball with both pitchers dealing and I enjoyed it so much I was glued to the TV watching that game oh yeah when I when I looked at the schedule and I saw that the probable starters were Castillo and Cortez I circled that game before the series even started and said Got to make sure I don't miss a pitch of this because it's going to be amazing. And, of course, the other two games, they figured out how to make fun too. But overall, just the the pitch-by-pitch match and the way that Castillo deals. I mean, Yankee Stadium had more fans in it than Great American – in those three games than Great American Ballpark has had all year to this point. So Castillo's not felt that energy. Castillo's not been in that environment. And you saw it like – he was struggling through some guys with like 12 pitch at bats, but whenever he caught the ball back from Stevenson, he was getting set on the mound. He was laughing. 
He was just like, yeah, here we go, man. This is fun. I'm playing a game. He gets it. He understands that even in the most tense of situations, he can calm himself down. But then on the other side of the coin, I mean, Cortez had a couple of innings where I'm like, okay, finally, the Reds are going to get something on him. And then he was able to pitch out of the damage days. Yeah, that's what he was doing most of the season up until this last stretch of four or five starts. Um, it looked like he was rebounding a little bit. Then he had a rough start against the Red Sox. And, you know, he's another guy they weren't expecting to do as well as he's been doing this year. Because, you know, for the first two and a half months, he was the true ace of the Yankees over Garrett Cole. And uh, last night was more Cortez beginning of the season than previous starts and he's fun to watch and you know he's one of those like old school guys who doesn't pitch that hard and it's fun to watch someone like that in the era of guys who are throwing 98 with regularity so it's fun to see someone like him doing what he's doing and yeah you know and Luis Castillo he's gonna look good in pinstripes and he's gonna be able to handle being in pinstripes (laughs) which is really good for us (laughs) I definitely want to talk about we'll 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 jump into that here in a little bit but there there was one other thing that I just took I I was really happy because you know people can get mad at the bullpen people can get mad at the defense if you're a Reds fan but guess what I that's been all year. Like, if you haven't watched to this point, this is what we've been watching all year, except the lineup hasn't bounced back. In this series, the lineup bounced back. The bats showed up. I mean, all that different crazy stuff, whether you're talking about four runs in the ninth in the first game, back-to-back-to-back home runs in the second inning against Severino, which, which it sucks that he went on the IL after that start, but because I know that he has a lot of trouble with injuries and things like that. And then just the way that they were able to fight back against the Yankees' bullpen last night, so much of that series has shown me what I've wanted to see from the lineup all year long. And I kind of hope that the Reds, like, don't just leave that in New York and just say, okay, well, that's going to be because that's that's a little bit what I'm worried about moving forward for the Reds is that they're they're like the fans and we're like, this was our playoffs, so you know we're good. We're heading into St. Louis. Who cares about them? Stupid <laughs> Cardinals. <laughs> I was going to ask, who are you guys playing next? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit worried. There's about a there's that a one. there is a a real possibility of a letdown coming after what just happened in New York and. Uh, you know, the fans felt it. I was energized. Jeff and I have been bouncing off the wall for every game. Even the one we lost, like we came and we recorded and we're like, we're not even mad. I mean, that was such a fun game in the way that this lineup battled. Um, It was interesting to see that that the Reds are not the only one that have some defensive struggles along the way. Um, I would love to hear Stacy's take on Matt Carpenter in right field because the <laughs> Reds broadcasters were just bagging on his arm uh, pretty much the whole series and talking about, you know, you, in fact, Jeff Brantley said yesterday, you run on him every chance you get. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he shouldn't be playing right field, but he is because Aaron Hicks is injured. So that doesn't help. Um, You know, the thing with the Yankees was when they were on that roll and winning as much as they were, the defense was solid, the pitching was solid, and the hitting was solid. And in these last few weeks, two weeks, it's all not solid. Uh, You know, IKF has had his issues all season, but he's really having issues the last couple of weeks, and the errors have been glaring. And as I said, you know, the outfield shuffle, Mac Carpenter shouldn't be playing the outfield, but he is because of injuries. So the Yankees are going to have to deal with that. Um, You know, people keep talking about the Yankees needing a starter going forward, which I've said all season, even with the pitching doing as well as they're doing, because if one guy goes Severino, it's going to be like a domino effect. Um, But they also need, they need an outfielder. They definitely need an outfielder or at least someone who can play a bunch of positions, including outfield and actually be able to play outfield, not just stand there. And that is a perfect segue coming up here in just a moment. I want to talk about why the reds need to be the active sellers. Those they need to basically set up a yard sign down there on the banks that says garage sale this way. Although we're not selling garage sale prices around here. It's going to be expensive and we'll tell you why coming up here in just a moment. But speaking of expensive, sometimes you can look at the shiny stuff, the jewelry and think, Oh gosh, what on earth do I even do? Steve, I know is just an expert on the jewelry stuff, but whenever it comes to me trying to buy something shiny, I have no idea. And blue Nile.com can help you 
out. If you're in that boat, if you're trying to celebrate a special moment, they can help you out and find exactly the right piece for you. Or if uh, you ago, well, that was weird. What is happening? <laughs> what happened? I was doing that good too. What is going on? <laughs> what happened? I. <laughs> That was Blue good Nile. too. Go to BlueNile.com and use promo code locked on. <laughs> Sorry, it's Blue the Nile. universe's way of never letting you have a successful ad I'm read. That's allowed what that to, I'm not allowed to do this ad right. Jeez. All right. Go to BlueNile.com. <laughs> They've got all the customization options that you could want for any special engagement, any special moment. And we've got this special offer to go to lock. Uh, go to Emma. Go to BlueNile.com and use promo code locked on. You'll save fifty dollars off five hundred dollars or more. Uh, BlueNile.com promo code locked on. <laughs> I thought I screwed up live reads a lot. Wow. Wow, Jeff. Well, what that, happened? My that, restream just went nuts. It cut out everybody. <laughs> Steve was up there for a minute. Then it showed my nameplate. And oh. you know what? You need to watch the Locked On MLB draft coverage we got coming up Sunday night, 9 p.m. Lindsey Crosby and Jeff Ellis from Locked On Guardians. Lindsey Crosby from Locked On MLB Prospects will be covering the first round, maybe the first couple of rounds, depending on how that all moves along. And they're going to be talking about your favorite team and who they're picking and why it's important that they pick that player. That's the Locked On MLB draft coverage coming up Sunday night live on Locked On MLB Prospects YouTube page. <sighs> Let's not do that again. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I just drank iced tea after brushing my teeth like only a half hour ago. Why did that, I do that? Not a great Empty flavor. Fresh. Empty <laughs> fresh. Um, I tell you what, th there's a lot that's going on here. That with the draft coming up after the draft is over, they always say that's when the trade deadline picks up. And there's been rumors, rumors, rumors about where Luis Castillo is going to go. We've heard rumors about Brandon Drury. A couple of rumors about Tyler Malley, but I really think those dominoes will really start to fall once Castillo is dealt. And then you have on the other side of the equation, the Yankees are the ones who are causing lots of these rumors, whether it's with Castillo, whether it's with Frankie Montes, whether, it, you know, whoever that they're looking for. You kind of mentioned it before, but what is the Yankees' main goal this trade deadline season? I would hope it would be to get a starter. Um, okay. They definitely need a starter. I know people are crying for the outfield, and yes, they probably do need someone in the outfield um, if they can unload Joey Gallo on someone. Um, but I think the main priority should be a starter. Okay. And, you know, Luis Castillo did really good in his Yankee Stadium audition last night. So Yeah, a couple of those. Yeah, that's I, when I saw that as the probable star, I'm like, yeah, that's an audition right there. And if it's oh, not yeah. an audition for the Yankees, somebody else is for sure watching. You don't even need to send a scout. There, you can just watch on TV. Oh, if but the Yankees Steve, don't get him after that, I'm going to be really angry. Like, how do you watch right? that start and think, eh, maybe we can get someone else? Yeah, because, I mean, we were joking, <laughs> Steve, that maybe he should just go over to the other dugout at the end of the game. I was surprised that it, the trade didn't go down somewhere around the third inning. Like the, uh, yeah. I, I really, I <laughs> yeah. really, really was. But listen, Jeff, I, I keep, I continue to have this, this thought nagging in the back of my head about Luis Castillo and uh, yesterday kind of clarified, you know, what was going on in my mind. And that's maybe it's not so far fetched. Like we joked about that. The Reds may actually re-sign Luis Castillo instead of trading him. Uh, it is no secret throughout major league baseball that the entire Castellini family, this ownership group, uh, their name is mud in the city of Cincinnati and what better way to rehabilitate their image and to try and write the course than to actually write a check to Luis Castillo. So with that in mind, because I, I really do think that if, if anything, they're at least having conversations about it at this point, because that would be the fastest way to rehabilitate the damage that Phil Castellini did this season. Uh, with that in mind, I, I wonder if Stacy, do you have any thoughts on Tyler Malley? Because if Luis Castillo is signed, Tyler Malley absolutely will be the guy they deal next in the pecking order. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you can't get one, get the other. 
I guess, you know, the Yankees have to do something and they will, you know, I was on a different podcast and they asked, uh, they, they basically were like, oh, well, you know, the Yankees have 62 wins. They're this many games ahead in the division. I said, no, 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 no. I want them to step on people's throats. I want Brian Cashman to do what he used to do in the 90s and early 2000s and go out and get guys, even though the Yankees pretty much had the division in the bag. Like, I want them to be as good as they can be. And if they have the prospects to get these guys, you do it. Got to go it. get the you got to go get the Carl Pavanos and the AJ Burnett's. Ugh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring those. Well, up. the Carl Pavano um. thing, no, but the Carl Pavano and like Jarrett Wright, and that was that whole Tampa faction thing with Bill Emsley. Was that his name? Where mm -hmm. George Steinbrenner gave those old guys in Tampa more power over Cashman, so you had all those horrible acquisitions and signings from like 2005 to 2007 ish. So. I won't fault Cash Cashman for that, but yeah, yeah. I, thank you <laughs> no, for bringing but, up Carl Pavano. <laughs> no, but I, I I definitely see them because they're not just competing against the AL East. I think that they are pretty confident in winning their own division. Now they've got to look at who else is in the American League. They got to look at the Astros. They got to make sure that they stay ahead of them, and then also the National League. I mean, the Dodgers and the Mets are going to be fighting it out. There's a real shot at a Subway Series, but also the Dodgers are really starting to come up if they can get their actual pitching staff healthy. They're having trouble with Walker Bueller and stuff like that. They might be a player for Luis Castillo or Tyler Malley if the Reds don't re-sign him, which I agree with Steve. Like, I mean, if they if they re-sign Luis Castillo, I will stop talking bad about this ownership. I really will. Because they have that's something that I've wanted them to do for the last two years. He's pitched well his entire career. And they should have bought out some of his arbitration years and then maybe two or three years of his free agents. Uh, or is as free agency period, but they're to the point now where if they do this, because there's so many fans, can't tell you how many comments and, and, and tweets and all this stuff that we get from people that are just like, why are you advocating for them to trade him? They should keep him. And I'm like, in an ideal world, yes, but we know who we're dealing with. This right. is not something where we, we're just like, yeah, it's MLB the show and they can keep whoever they want. That's not how the, that's not how the Reds ownership has ever played this. So we look at this and we're like, what is most likely? And what's probably most likely is they end up making the trade. But I'm with Steve. You want to repair that reputation. You I was going to say, how bad would it be? Like, how, what would your reaction? Would your reaction be, of course, they're trading him? Or would it just be? I don't know. Like, from what he said at the beginning of the year, I understand why Reds fans were pissed off because it right. was ridiculous what he said about everything and you, like why would you even want to like why would you say that because <laughs> why would anyone want to go see your team if you say something like that it's like uh mitt where he, what uh mitt what's his name Whit merrifield there you go i almost spoonerized yeah. his name talking about well i'd get the vaccine if we were a playoff team yeah like what yeah. <laughs> don't right, say like... things like that <laughs> no yeah. so would it be right. um just a Oh, this is typical for them trading him away, or would you be like legitimately like sell the damn team? It, <laughs> Get it someone else to you know, come in. <laughs> it wouldn't be because if they trade him now, I mean, it is acknowledgement, hey, we're not gonna sign him, so we're gonna trade him. What they've done in the past is hang on to guys for too long. Mm. Uh back themselves in a corner and not get value in the trades. If right. they were to trade him this season, they would get value. Oh yeah. And that would be a, a legitimate effort to try to do things better. And they, you know, they've talked about trying to mirror what Tampa does and you know, Tampa does what they do well and the reds aren't going to be there all at once, but this would be a move in that direction. Uh, if they do nothing is the thing that makes me say, Oh, the same old reds yes. they're they're gonna sell at a terrible time they're gonna not get any value back at all we're gonna get some low-ranked prospect that will never pan out that would be the status quo trading him now that's a new direction signing him is a completely different direction something they've never done before right. so you know that's kind of how that pecking order goes yeah and and a, something they've never done before in a very good way too because i mean i think of guys like i mean the Yankees have experience with him, Aroldis Chapman, which, by the way, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I say that name, and there's Yankees fans that lose their minds. I, I was sad, man. Like, I was in my feelings watching him pitch against the Reds. I just, it was just, mm, 
there was something about it. I wasn't just... in my feelings or sad because he actually looked okay, <laughs> which I was I was happy about because oof, he was looking rough there for a second. But no, he actually looked okay. <laughs> we'll earmark this date and be like, okay, well, if Chapman figures it out, it's because you know he was back around his old team for a minute. <laughs> There's not a lot of guys that are on this team now that were on the team with him. I mean, Joey's still here and stuff like that. But like, it's things like that that I look at and I say, okay. The Reds get too attached to certain players, so we have to ask them to do one of two things which they don't do, and that is either act on that attachment and sign them and pony up, or forget that attachment and do something smart, and they just don't do either one of those things. Like the timing's always off. Yeah. Yeah. And and even when the timing wasn't, when they traded Johnny Cueto, and we thought they won the deal initially, the prospects that they got back, none of those prospects panned out, none of them worked, and Johnny Cueto's still pitching. So there's that thought in the back of my mind of just like, well, what if we sign him? Maybe we get a pitcher like that that hangs around for a while. I don't know. That that's that's one of those things that it's a conversation that takes a lot longer than 30 minutes is what is more of a sure thing, a player declining or a prospect actually working out because yeah. I think that's a really hard discussion to have. I I would I'd be very happy if they make a good trade or if they make a good signing cuz I think I think those are possible. So, with the Reds' process in mind, the whole selling idea, I think that there's something you can bet on, and that is that the Yankees will be interested. And Steve, if you want to make a good bet, where are you going to go? Well, Jeff, I'll tell you right now, you're going to head to betonline.net because betonline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports information. You can find all of the latest sports development, like who the Reds are trading and who they are not and how much money the Yankees are going to spend. You can find all the news and all of the odds, including all of the odds on Major League Baseball season 2022 as underway. You can bet futures in the National Football League. Make sure you you put some money down on the Cincinnati Bengals who day to win the AFC North. They've got all of the fighting sports. They've got MMA. They've got UFC. They've got boxing. Boxing is still a thing. Bet online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and so much more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action because betonline.net is where the game starts. Thanks again for joining us for this Locked On Reds, Locked On Yankees crossover. It comes to the point in the podcast where a team like the Reds, who are going to be active sellers, asks another team that's actually good at baseball which players they would like from their team. So, Stace, who are you taking? Luis Castillo, obviously. But yeah. I was saying before we recorded just well all right for the fact that he's a utility player and he can play different positions but also for the eye candy part of it because i'm human <sighs> brand injury <laughs> we don't talk about that enough uh the do eye candy we get side, bonus prospects back because stacy thinks he looks hot in his uniform is that is that it's a not thing? even that it's his face <laughs> I, I have a thing with faces like i love tyler glass now even though he's a ray and you know he's like 20 years younger than me but i'm still like woo he looks like a disney prince you know so i'm <laughs> that's the fun thing about being me and being a baseball fan because i know about baseball and i know stats and i know the history and all that stuff and then i can look at the players and think they're cute this is fun like i have that double <laughs> thing going for me you know <laughs> I'm, I'm really interested um, to hear two. you bring him up brandon yeah. drury i have been listen as much as i want them to sign castillo to rehabilitate rehabilitate their image they have to trade brandon drury and sell him for as high as they can i mean this this will be nick crawl's piece de resistance if they can go out and turn him into anything that is of value for more than the next five minutes it, it'll be an amazing deal for the reds uh, i'm so happy for brandon drury i think he is he's done a great thing in cincinnati this year in a situation that's just been bad all the way around and he's done everything the team has asked of him and he has done it very very well but i'm not sure this is who he is long term and his value will never be higher than it is right now this season so yes trade brandon dream trade him to the yankees package him with tyler malley for a huge deal something that would mirror almost what you would get for luis castillo uh if you're able to sign him and keep him in cincinnati uh absolutely yeah yeah 
Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that he is a all-star snub in my book, if nothing but every team is supposed to have an all-star. And, and you know what? It's great that Luis Castillo made the all-star game because we talk about how talented he is every single time he pitches because he's amazing. But I kind of wanted Brandon Drury to get that recognition as good as he has been. Like we said, it's just so much far and away better than what he's ever done in his career. And the reason that I say this, and there's going to be Reds fans that aren't happy with me that I invoke this dude's name in this manner, but I think of Scooter Jeanette. And I think of what they did with him. They just kind of let him fill a spot for a couple of years. And when he was super hot, they didn't do anything with him. They didn't sign him. They didn't trade him. They, did, they just let him play. And if they do that with Brandon Jury, I, I don't know. It's going to fall in line with what they've always done. But I just don't know how we get excited about that. Because Brandon Jury came here off the waiver wire heap. In the middle of spring training, nobody cared. Everybody's like, whatever. We're at Brandon Drury, sure, that's fine. Great, another guy. He's going to be on the bench, right? And then through some different injuries and stuff like that, he gets a starting role, and then he keeps on going, and he keeps on punching. And for a while there, he's been the best power hitter of this team. So you got to so cash in on that. So, Stacy, all that being said, what would the Yankees be willing to pay? Hmm. For a brand injury, and let's let's okay, let's say you're gonna uh, pursue a package. <laughs> going anywhere for them? <laughs> I don't think they. I said this. I've said this a couple times. I don't. If they're not. I don't think they're getting rid of Volpe simply because they held on to him and didn't go after any of the big shortstops in the off season. Because if they were going to, then they would have just been like. With Volpe, they're hang they're prospect hugging right now, which is something they haven't done in a while. But they're hugging that boy, and um, I don't see him moving, unless it's something spectacular. But I really don't see him going anywhere because I think is Luis Castillo and Brandon Drury spectacular. Is that spectacular enough? I think. What about Tommy Pham. I think they <laughs> <laughs> actually, you, you know. He could be a possibility he plays well. too. He plays yeah, well. yeah, he actually could be a possibility too. I forgot about him. I, Tommy Pham well, in New York. Football. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I swear there about were a couple of times there, during the season, during the season, during the series, where the home plate umps who were horrible for both teams. There were a couple of calls on him. I really thought he was going to hit someone. Yeah. Because we know he has the history of doing that. And, you know, he did make one, there was one face after a call that they showed on the yes camera. And I was like, he's going to go. <laughs> um, there were there were three or four at bats where he walks away from the box just going yeah like like he yeah like he has that look in his eye like he's gonna kill someone it's like yeah. uh <laughs> you know he could be good in the outfield but i'm kind of worried about that whole hitting people thing especially right. with guys like josh donaldson on the team like yeah i don't want the bronx zoo yankees making a return that wouldn't be fun <laughs> um maybe like a peraza because he's good you know him and volpe are Pretty, Peraza, yeah. you know, um, but you never know. I mean, the Yankees might actually just be like, all right, if we if this is what we need to do for Luis Castillo and two other guys, one other guy, then bye. Nice to see you. <laughs> There's so, a guy. There's a guy, too, that I've been wondering about. And I don't know. I mean, he's not he's not like a top, top guy that people are talking about a lot. But I heard the comparison of uh, Zion Williamson and I just got really interested because somebody said that Jason Dominguez is this is the Zion Williamson of Major League Baseball, and Hunter Green has been compared to the LeBron James mm. of Major League Baseball. So I'm wondering if they get Jason Dominguez, do the Reds win the NBA Finals? Yeah, Jason Dominguez is kind of doing this, from what Lindsay was telling me the other night. Um, but he's still young; he's only 19. I feel like mm. he has a chance to change things, but. Some of his numbers have gone down, and it's like he's not progressing to the point where they want him to. So Lindsay thinks that this could be a really good opportunity for another team to swoop in and get Jason Dominguez and help him develop. So that could be a possibility. I like that. You never like know. That. He's built. He's, he's, you know, built. Big dude. Yeah. 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 Not quite that. like the Alejandro Kirk fire hydrant built, but close to 
you know, or like a Vogelback. Back, he looks like a Lego oh, man. I love Vogelback. He looks, like, he looks like a Lego man. <laughs> Hopeful future red Daniel Vogelback. I've said yeah. that multiple times. Uh, Stacy, this is this feels like a really good spot to end it. Thank you so much for joining us here today. It's trade deadline season. We're going to be talking a lot more about this every single day, whether you're talking from a buyer's perspective on Lockdown Yankees or an extreme seller's perspective on Lockdown Reds. You can find your trade deadline coverage right here with Locked On. Thank you so much for watching and listening to today's episode. Now make sure to check out Locked On MLB Prospects. Lindsey Crosby is getting you covered up to the draft. He's got a great draft preview coming out today. He's going to have you all ready for everything that's probably going to happen, maybe won't happen, but he's going to have you ready for whatever happens on Sunday. Then you're going to want to check out the Locked On MLB draft coverage Sunday night, 9 p.m., right there on the Locked On MLB Prospects YouTube channel. That's a mouthful. But that'll do it for us here today. Thank you so much. We will see each and every one of you on Monday.